Hi guys, just checking if this is working. I'm testing a new software and let's see, fingers are crossed. Hi guys, welcome to Behind the Scenes. Again, this is Angela Wolf and it's Wednesday, great to see you. So I've got lots to share with you again today. We have some sewing projects, we have a tutorial, some sketching and a book review. So welcome, say hi, I'm testing a new software. So let me make sure that I have you up here. You have to be patient with me on this one. And whenever I test something new, it's like you just hope that everything goes well. Okay, yes, it's working. I see you rolling in. <laughs> oh, phew. I tried to test it in the group and it wasn't working so well. For those of you in the group that saw I'm going live in a minute, save the moment. Well, now you know that um, that didn't work out so well. <laughs> so we're working now. All right, so what you could have seen while I was trying to go live with you, I got my dream machine into the horn cabinet. So easy, I'm gonna show you how that works. And guess what I'm wearing? I know, <laughs> I see the laughing, I see the laughing. There's strings everywhere, do you see the strings? Well, I haven't finished hemming this jacket. This jacket is from the last season of It's So Easy. Remember last week or the week before when we draped the square sweater? Well, this is the square sweater that I wore, that I wear, um, but I should probably hem it. This fabric frays just a tad bit, which is not so good. <laughs> I know. Oh, goodness gracious. So anyways, how are all of you? I forgot that this was Easter week, so some of you might be out of town. And then after the whole Facebook fiasco, some of you might not be on Facebook at all. So guess what the good news is? I am also live streaming uh, on YouTube right now for all my friends on YouTube. So we're doing both at the same time. So if you're leaving Facebook for any reason, you can still catch me on YouTube. And you know, it's really funny because I got an email from a couple of friends that said they gave up Facebook and social media for Lent. Well, Lent is over officially at the end of the week, I think today officially, but at the end of the week. so. I will see you back next week. <laughs> All right, so I have cut up some minky fabric. What are you sewing this week, by the way? I tried to cut this without making a big mess. Obviously, I didn't do a very good job. It still scatters everywhere. So that's okay. You just need a little vacuum cleaner and some tape. It looks like it's snowing here. <laughs> I know. Ugh. Oh, Janice, you said it's Easter at your house every day. Okay, so before I get sewing, I just have a question. As you know, I don't cook very well. At, well, that's not that's a kind term, probably. Ask my husband. I don't enjoy it. If I enjoyed it, I would do it all the time, but I don't enjoy it. So I'm going to, we are going to my mother's and then we're going to his family's house and everybody's cooking. And so the only thing they ever ask me to bring is bread or a salad. So that's how boring I am. <laughs> So if anybody has any good recipes for me, something that's easy, maybe that's a uh, dessert or something like that, let me know or post it below, leave a link later because I could surprise them, you know. I know, that'd be kind of fun. All right, now before I get to sewing, I just have to say thank you to a couple people. This week was like a party heaven in my office. I got a care package. Actually, I got two care packages. So uh, the first one, I'll just move you back a little bit so you can see this. All right. I think you can see this okay. Move my keyboard out of the way. I've got all the contraptions going on. Check this out. First, yeah, the guys went crazy. This came in a package yesterday. <laughs> and I absolutely, this is from Slider Fishing. All right, so um, you this was just so funny. So I get a message. <laughs> Judy, are you on here? I get a message and she says, they tried to deliver your mail and it wouldn't come on Saturday. And I said, no worry, the office is closed. So uh, we always have somebody here catching mail. But check this out. So the guys went crazy for this because they're all getting ready to leave to go walleye fishing. So you were the biggest hit ever. They absolutely loved this. And I want to thank you, thank you. In fact, I think some of the packages are already missing. I told them they couldn't take any until today after the live show, and uh, they did. So in case you're wondering what these are, for those non-fishermen in the group, 
these are little rubber fish. Although I'm going to have to say that, <laughs> let me bring you back up here for a sec. I thought that these would make really cute earrings. They're very lightweight. And maybe I could put some in with um, the stripper fish. They might like these. I don't know. What do you think? Reen, these are really fun. So I know that the guys are going to use these for fishing, but I'm going to have to sneak a couple of them just for myself. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a really fun gift. It's really fun when you get something besides bills and stuff and work at your office. All right. And then Karen, these are gorgeous. Karen sent, and I'll just bring this down here so you can see. Karen sent these beautiful lace. They're open lace bookmarks. She said she knows how much I love to read, and now I have these to read with. These are absolutely gorgeous. So if you have a pattern for this that you want to share with us, because this is pretty cool. And Wynn wants to know how long this took. So let me slide this up here. Wynn wants to know how long it took for you to make this. All right. <laughs> okay, so I like this new software because I can actually see your comments better. All right. So, uh, oh, Janet, that's a pretty good idea. She, if you didn't see, Janet put a little option on there for frozen yogurt. All right, these are great. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, thank you. And I, you know what? Three is a good number because I'm usually reading three books at the same time. Just ask my husband. He has to hold them around. <laughs> so thank you. You guys are so good to me. All right. Did you see what was on the blog this week? Lots are on the blog. And I want to show you, okay, first, let me just step back here, move my nice big beautiful chair. Can you see this okay back here? I can bring it up. I didn't even ask. I'm assuming you can hear me okay because you're re replying to what I'm talking about. But with this new program I'm using, I have no idea if you can hear me. I know you can see me. So check this out. The full tutorial, the video tutorial, and everything is up on YouTube, and it's on the blog. It's on my blog. It's on Brother's blog. And this was such a fun top. So remember, this was that turtleneck that was really high. Okay, let me just give you the visual if you don't remember. It was a really tall turtleneck. Not pink, of course, but black. All right, and this fabric is that sheer. It's not stretch. It's just sheer which is really cool. So I took the sweater, I cut off the sleeves, I cut the back lower, I saved the sleeves to use as a pattern. They were raglan style, you can see the seam right there. Now a lot of people asked me, what do you do with this fabric? I said, it doesn't fray. So I did not finish it. Now you could finish it, but this is just like the stuff that we see on gowns. So it doesn't fray. So I cut the, the sweater down with a little V here. And in the back, I just cut it straight across using the old fabric as a guide and, you know, just measuring it on my body. So what do you think of this? Did you see this earlier? Let me just make sure that <laughs> I'll get used to this new thing. Yeah, this is very fun. Okay, so I see somebody just asked me if this is stretch fabric. No, this is just tulle. It has, it does have a light stretch to it. So I guess I take that back. It does have a light stretch, but I wouldn't consider it like spandex or lycra. All tool has a little bit of a stretch because it's an open weave. This fabric does have a stretch. So this area here, I did a top stitching and that was with the triple stitch. Yeah, okay. That worked out pretty good. And then back here, this was all with the triple stitch. That's about it. I did a French seam throughout this area. That worked out pretty good. All right. So anyways, the video is up and the blog is up. Okay, I see your comments right now. You said that the video is good, but the video or the voice is good, but the video keeps going in and out. All right, I'll have to work on that. Well, the good news is the playback is usually good. Thank heavens. <laughs> okay. Let me see. Oh, Veronica, you finally made it. Okay, you can hear me now. Another said poor video. So maybe if I move slower, let me know if I move slower that if the video works a little bit better. 
I don't know, new technology. It's always like a, a one plus with two negatives. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Remember this sweater? I told you last week, this is going to be my next pattern hack. I'm going to cut it off the top and add elastic. That's for this afternoon. And then guess what I found in my stash? Another pesty turtleneck, which is this. So I'm going to try this one as well. This one I haven't decided. This could be more of a spring top. I might just turn it into a tank with a zipper. So two more for the blog. All right, let's talk about this square sweater. So I showed you how to drape this the other day and it, you know, it's pretty easy. You just, you know, mold it. If you didn't see it, you can go back and watch the last episode. That's where I did this at. But there's a few things to be wary of. And I mentioned that if you don't line up where the armholes are real good, you can end up with too much fabric in the back, which is exactly what happened here. So here's the back. And what I did to solve that problem, because I wanted to salvage this top, let me just bring it down here, is I stitched. And I used a different color just so you could see it as well. But I actually took a whole seam out of the back. So see how there's a nice fold right here? Yeah. And then I stitched all the way down. Back stitched, and then we were finished. So that's, that's what I had to do to save that. Otherwise, it would fall off the back shoulders. Um, Susan, you wanted to know if the shear was hard to cut or so you recently finished a crepe to shin blouse and nearly lost your mind. <laughs> All right. I'll bring you back. Okay. No, it wasn't too hard. The only thing I can say about when I sewed it together is I did, I really didn't use pins, but you could use clips. Clips helps that a lot. If you just use clips on the edge, I used a ballpoint needle about a 3.0 stitch length uh, you could use a 2.5 too though because that's a really thin fabric i stitched i pressed the seam open i trimmed off the edge and then turned it over for the for the um, french seam but i really didn't have any problems with it but crepe de shin that's a whole different category tool is a little bit stiff it'll it'll hold on its own but crepe de chine is not so not so willing. <laughs> you could with crepe de chine, you can spray it with a little bit of starch. Some people have done that. I don't because I'm afraid it's not going to come out. But that's one idea. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. A lot of pressing. That's all I can say for that. I know. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> Marianne, I like what you wrote. Only Angela Wolf shares fishing and sewing tips. <laughs> Love the top. Well, you never know. I got to keep everyone entertained. In fact, there's quite a few husbands that are watching with their wives. So I say hi. If Steve's out there, Rebecca, if your husband's out there, I just met him last week. They are a very nice couple. All right. So here, this is just a stretch knit. The same thing. In case you were wondering, this one, I think I did hem the sleeves. Um, oh, no, I was just testing stitches. So I haven't hemmed this yet. One of the same tops that I take everywhere that is not hemmed. Okay, so if the video holds up, if not, I won't use this software again, but I'm going to keep trying to roll with it, so be patient with me. Uh, <laughs> you get it anyways, Marta? I know. Wynn said, why don't you test the, this uh, new software on a non-live day? I said, well, I don't know. Maybe when nobody will show up, I won't know. <laughs> well, at least if it's a bomb, nobody will know too, right? Okay. Hi, everyone. I see you. More rolling in. I'm just scrolling through to your questions. All right, Cindy, to my salad question. Oh, ingredients. Orange jello, a regular box, cottage cheese, regular size Cool Whip, regular size crushed pineapple. Ooh, I like that. I like all of those things. Put the cottage cheese, the jello in a bowl, mix. I can handle that. Hey, Wynn, does this sound like something I could handle? <laughs> He's laughing. As long as there's not a mango in it, we're good. <laughs> the mango is a long story. <laughs> Refrigerate for at least one hour. Can be made the day before. Oh, that's a bonus. And I use this for a side salad. That sounds really good. I think everybody would like that too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, tissue paper. Linda mentioned tissue paper for crepe de chine. Yes, tissue paper works, but it sometimes I find 
well, a lot of people use tissue paper when they're sewing some slippery fabric together. I just have a hard time because it's hard to see both of the seams. It's tricky for me. You could baste tissue paper to it while you're stitching. That's an idea. I know that some people will use wash away or rip away stabilizer, embroidery stabilizer and cut strips with the sticky back and then it'll hold the fabric in place and stitch. The only issue is Krita Shin sometimes will stretch a little bit and if you lay that fabric on top of a sticky back stabilizer and stretch it, then you pull it off and you're gonna end up with puckers. So that's another thing to be weary of. Okay, oh, Rebecca, you are there. Hello, <laughs> say hi to your husband if he's on here. Okay, I see a few more. All right, Susan, what else do you have to say? Oh, you sprayed it with starch and pressed, pressed, pressed and pressed. <laughs> that sounds like, <laughs> all right, you were pulling your hair out. All right, so why don't I show you this foot? We talked about this last week and many of you asked, what's the difference between a move it foot and the walking foot? This is the move it foot. So let's see, I think it'd be easier if I just bring this down here so you could see. I'll pause in between videos, so hopefully this will not delay on you. So this has that rubber wheel at the bottom. This foot pops on and off. There are different feet that you can get. And then this goes up and down. The reason being is once you have this attached, this attaches right like a regular foot, which I'll show you how. You can lift this up if you want it disengaged. If you want it engaged, you put it down. So if you need it for a minute and then you don't need it, you don't have to change your whole foot. This hooks into the machine. Because what happens is the sewing machine tells this roller how fast to go, which is different than a walking foot. A walking foot just walks with the feed dogs and you can control it that way. This has something inside the machine that does this. So let me figure out, let's see, how can I slide you? Okay, don't get sick for a minute. I'm just gonna slide you over here. And Let's just bring this down a little bit. Okay. If anybody's getting seasick, I'm finished now. And then if I bring this, I think like this. <laughs> this is all new to me. All right, you can see my hand there, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So you attach this to the machine. I'll pause for a second because I know it takes a minute for the video to catch up. If you attach this to the machine, I'll get my hand out of the way, but unfortunately that's a small space. So all I'm doing right now is unscrewing the side of the machine and then I'm attaching this with the screw. All right, of course I don't have my screwdriver. Oh, that's tight. Now, if I was gonna sew on this for a long time, I would tight, I would go and find my, dig around and find my little screwdriver. It's probably here somewhere. And then this hooks into the machine back here somewhere. There's a little knob. So I push that in place. And let's see if I can bring you down here just. How's that? Put it, you're in my drawer. <laughs> How do you like that? All right, you can see that, okay. Now this is, I don't know if this is mirror imaged. So let me know if it is, then I'll be, you guys are gonna be really confused, but I think that you're okay. Yeah, all right, so I already have my machine down here and I'm going to make this a little bit higher. Let's see, there we go. Remember I told you this is electric, very cool. So I have a nice flat surface to work on. I'm gonna have fuzzies all over for a week. I'm gonna take my foot and put this on here. Woo, all right, so far so good. All right, now this fabric, as you know, is very, very, very furry. So figure out which way the nap is going. It looks like one nap is going this way. Let's check this piece out. And that's going down. So you wanna make sure both naps are going the right way. Now, in case you missed this, we are working on Minky, the Lux Minky fabric. And Rachel, if you're on here, be sure to put the link to your store. She's in Minnesota. 
All right, so put those together. And then I just want to show you the difference here. Now, these, by the way, are not cut the same length. So don't you dare send me a message that I'm sewing wrong and they end up crooked because they're not cut the same length. <laughs> I'm just starting that from the beginning. <laughs> just got to like, you know, full disclosure here. I'm going to set it to a straight stitch. Let's see if I can slide you over here for a minute. I'm going with a straight stitch and a stitch length of 3.0. Now, do you see all of these grayed out buttons? That's pretty cool because that tells me that with this foot, I can't use any of those features. It shows me up here that I'm using the move it foot. And it shows me that I cannot use any of those. You can use some decorative stitches, but I'm just going to use the straight stitch. And then if you hit your menu button, which so many people never even take advantage of this button. So let me just make sure you're nice and straight. On this screen, here's your dual feet adjustment. Now, if you have the brother or the baby lock version, this will be about in the same place. This is a, uh, we're on page one. So I can increase this or decrease. And you know, it's kind of fun. You should just test it to just see what the difference is. So I'm just gonna go plus two for now. I haven't even tested this yet because I haven't sewn my vest. We'll get to the sketches here in a minute, but just click okay. And I know what you're thinking. Well, how in the heck am I going to know what to put it at? Well, I'll test it for you and I'll let you know. But you can just test it yourself. That's what the whole the thing is all about. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to sew. I haven't, you know, this is like a big no-no. I sat down. I plugged in the machine. I don't have the presser foot in, so I'm just going to use the green button. And I have not tested the stitch, so hopefully I better check my bobbin. That'd be kind of embarrassing, wouldn't it? All right. There we go. Let's see if I can get you just a little bit closer. How's that? Pretty good? Okay, and I do have my knob down. If I had it up, that would disengage the foot and now I have it down. One more thing, the speed up here. With this foot, you really shouldn't go full speed. I do, but you're not supposed to. Let's just leave it like that. And with this fabric, I really wouldn't use pins, but I would use clips if I needed to save a mark a seam like a sleeve or something like that, so. All right, now this is just a crazy wide seam allowance. I just wanted to show you this, some ideas on here for this fabric. All right, that is one wide seam allowance. <laughs> but let's see what, this is was a big kicker for me. When I open this up, a lot of times on faux fur, see if I can bring it just a little bit closer here. Okay, I'll pause for a sec so you can catch on. And it, I think I realized that with this software, if I move fast, it takes a minute for the video to catch up. So ignore the little blurbs, okay? <laughs> I'll just chat until you catch on. Okay, I see you're on. All right, we're, you know, a learning curve. So with this seam, the one thing that I wanted to check is a lot of times with faux fur, you end up with little pieces of fur inside the seam there, just like that. Let's see if I got that close enough. So somebody asked this question the other day, and it was such a good question. Of course, I don't have my little hair. Actually, hey, Wynn, are you here? Oh, you are. Hey, would you do me a favor? Will you go in the dressing room and get that bolt, those black um, the comb? There's like a comb or a brush in there, like a real people's comb. <laughs> Not the one that I'm going to get for our cat one of these days. All right, do you see what I'm doing right here? I'm using my scissors to fill that out. So look at the difference of that little part of the seam, how I use my scissors to pull that out compared to down here where it's in bed in the seam. Thank you. <laughs> you have some people saying hi to you. Wynn says hi back, y'all. All right, this is another idea. These are just, these are like super cheap combs. There's this great little Chinese hair place down the street and I go there and buy a bunch of these because I bring them to travel with and everything. You know, use these for like little baby's hair. See what I'm doing there? Now look at the difference at this area of the seam compared to down here where I haven't done anything. Can you see the difference? 
That's embedded, and this is not. I will probably go ahead and do a blog post on this with close-up photos because you can really tell the difference there. Yeah, there's a huge difference. I can see some of your questions rolling in. Yeah, that is awesome. Okay, so let me bring you back up here. <laughs> Hello. This, I'm not used to this part yet, but okay, you're back on. So what did you think of that? That's pretty cool. I'm just going to go through here and roll, and I see a bunch of your questions rolling up about this. <laughs> Livy just told me that this video is so funny. It doesn't seem to, the movement pauses for a minute. And when you move your head, your teeth turn into milk mustache. <laughs> milk mustache. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> hey, Livy, thanks. I like that visual. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. You make sewing a t-shirt quilt together while I watch <laughs> fun. Hey, Kathy, that sounds like a fun thing to do. A t-shirt a quilt t-shirt. When that's what I should do with all your fishing shirts. He said, sure. In fact, I know what he's thinking right now. No more big projects. I just finished painting the living room. Yeah. In case you missed last week, Wynn surprised me, painted the entire living room. All my books are up. Now I have bookmarks. Thanks to Karen. And oh, by the way, many of you asked me last week, do I play the piano? Because I said he even dusted the baby grand. Yes, I do play the piano. That is one of my hidden, uh, things that I just do it for fun. You'll never see me do that live ever, but I do. I love, I write music. I've been playing since I was a kid. Okay. Oh my goodness, Pat, that sounds like a de delicious dessert too. So for those on YouTube that can't read what's going on on Facebook here, a large plain yogurt, free vanilla. Wait, this sounds very similar. Free vanilla pudding powder. I love pudding powder. I know how to do that. I can even do pudding. No. Yeah. Pudding pie, chocolate pudding pie. That's always a good one. I'm sneezing with this fabric. <laughs> uh, pineapple, chili. Oh, and chill. Okay, that sounds very similar, and I do like yogurt. I'm going to have to go through here. If So anybody who's looking for more uh, recipes for Easter, make sure after the video, scroll through, and there are a ton on these. Just take a photo with your phone. That's what I usually do. Okay, you have a different machine, and you can't afford this one, but it's on your budget. Oh, it's on your wish list. <laughs> hey, that's okay. You know what? Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts regarding brother versus Viking Husqvarna? Well, I probably shouldn't answer that for many reasons. One, I'm a brand ambassador for brother. So all disclosure. And so, and a lot of the baby lock machines with the brother are very similar. So I'm good with that. Viking, I did use Viking for a few years before years and years and years ago. And I'm going to leave it at that. So anybody else want to pipe in and help her out on that? Feel free. I have not used Viking for so many years. I couldn't even tell you if I liked it or I didn't like it. So I really have no comparison. I've only been using the Brother and Baby Lock machines for the last, oh gosh, 10 years. But when I first started sewing, and you, some of you have heard this before, I started with the basic of basic machines, absolute basic. And I started my custom apparel business with that. I sewed on that for, gosh, at least 10 years until it just about died. I still have it here because it does a fabulous, you know where you put elastic in the bobbin and then you sew with it? Oh gosh, it does the best stitch. Nobody still has meat, <laughs> has beat that. So, and I also started with a very basic serger. So even if this one isn't in your budget, there are a lot of machines out there. I bought my mom one a couple Christmases ago for maybe 200 bucks, 250 on Amazon. Oh, by the way, speaking of Amazon, on my influencer page, I added, a few new machines, some pressing ideas for you. Let's see what else. I had a lot of fun on there this week. I added some new books. Speaking of, we're going to talk about books. But, you know, if you just do sewing and you don't do embroidery, don't stress about what machine you have. A lot of them will sew well. I wouldn't go as low as 50 bucks because those are a little tinky. But for a kid, it's perfect. So keep that in mind. The Strong and Tough machine, I've used that a lot. That comes off of uh, Amazon. That's a great machine. I haven't brought it on the boat yet, but I'm thinking about it because it's lightweight and it looks a little manly. So the guys might like that. <laughs> All right. Um, Karen, what did you say? Here's my dessert recipe. Go to Whole Foods and get a berry chantilly cake. 
<laughs> Wynn loves that. <laughs> Can you hear him laughing over there? Wynn says, Karen, you got it right on. <laughs> you know, the other one we love to do is the ice cream cakes from Baskin Robbins. Those are good. Except you have to get them the day before because they're really frozen. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, gosh. Uh, Wynn says hi back to you all that are saying hi, too. Used to use pin to pluck the hair out. Hey, Linda, that's a good idea. Pin is good. This, By the way, these scissors that I was using to pull that hair out, this is a curved, a curved scissor. So, yeah, that works out well. Okay, let's see. Hey, Sarah, nice to see you. <laughs> I'm rolling through to it. Just skip ahead to your questions here. Oh, Janice has a good one. Five cup salad, one can drained pineapple, one large drained mandarin oranges. Mandarin oranges. Yeah, I, I know what those are. <laughs> one cup miniature marshmallows. Oh my gosh, the boys love marshmallows. I think that uh, Colin and Cody would like this a lot. And eight ounces of sour cream. That sounds like, okay, so I'm going to try some of these and I will let you know if they work out because those sound good. The boys, they love marshmallows when they went to the cottage it was crazy all right so let me skip your questions for a minute i'm going to show you a few things i've been working on some of you are on instagram some of you are not yesterday i posted a photo of my sketches and thankfully you could not see the boots <laughs> which are a little scary um this was one of the tops i'm debating with the jacket this one or this one. Yeah. So I had votes. And so I said hoodie or no hoodie. So if you look closer, oh, I can see if I move, it gets all cre creepy again. All right, guys, I'll try not to move. This one here has a hood. It has little closures in the front. I think I've already decided I'm going to use fur hook. Fur hooks, have you seen those? Those are really cool. This has a little bit longer in the back, shorter in the front, and either a vest or a sweater sleeve. So I've narrowed it down to that one. With a hood or kind of a little, just a small neckline. That fabric is so soft that I'd hate to waste not having it along my neck. All right. And then the other one, I'll move slowly here, is this one. And this one is a little bit longer. This is definitely a vest style. It has the hook, the fur hook closures, closure, and I'm thinking of having a couple big pockets, maybe hidden pockets in the side, something to throw my phone in. So this is photo number two, and this is photo number one. Pick number one or two, hoodie or no hoodie, and that will tell me. I've cut part of it out, so some of it can be changed, but I've cut part of it out because both of them are doing pattern hacks with my Evelyn pattern. I, I made a joke yesterday. If I don't get to sewing this thing, it's going to be uh, spring and I'm not going to need a faux, curt, faux fur curt, faux, faux, faux fur coat, <laughs> except on the fishing boat. When that would look kind of attractive on the boat, don't you think? I could give scarves to the guys. I'm thinking that would push the limit. That's not going to happen. All right. And... Uh, I can see, yes, you're welcome for the comment about the sewing machines. And if you need tips on ones that you're looking for ones on Amazon, I've tested a lot of them, so I could help you if you'd like. All right, so there's no more questions on that faux fur. I will go back and check, as always. Uh, what is the curve in those little scissors meant for? Oh, Libby, that's a good question. The curve, these are applique scissors. So if you're cutting, see how the curve goes up so you can get real close to the fabric? You can cut the hair on your hands if you'd like, <laughs> uh, but you can use these and it'll cut without damaging your fabric. So that's what these are for, little appliques. I'm trying to think. These are not my Kai's. These are, um, oh gosh, they're a sponsor of It's So Easy. That's terrible that I can't think of what the brand is, but they um, they carry a lot of things like this. These are nice. Kai has them too. They're, you can find these anywhere. All right, the minky could go inside the jacket. Pat, I like that. I thought of put, putting the minky inside the jacket. I'm going to use the minky inside the facing and inside the neckline facing, but not the whole jacket. It's just too much fabric. It's not that thick. 
me hold this up again. So it's not that thick. See how big that seam is? So two layers is just a little bit thicker. It's hard probably for you to tell on here, but it's a thinner fabric. So I'm not too worried, but two layers might be a bit much. That's why I decided not to do the square jacket with it because I just thought it would be too much fabric. Oh, all right. Oh, I see. Oh, I see a lot of ones. Oh, goodness. Susan, you said no hoodie. And that's just because I don't like hoodies. <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's why I asked everybody say no hoodies. Because if you were live, oh, if you live where I live, no hoodie. <laughs> All right, got it, no hoodies. <laughs> I could take that a few different ways. Uh, I like the hood option in Chicago. You never know when you will have a windstorm. That is so true. In fact, Wynn bought me a jacket this year for Christmas and he said, I'll take the hood off. It was like snapped on hood on its North Face jacket. I said, please leave the hood. It's always raining wherever I go. In fact, that jacket has been awesome on uh, the airplanes. It's like a big snuggy blanket. All right, so I'm going to skip ahead now to the book review, the Tunic Bible. This, tell me if this is coming in reversed, because if it is, um, I will take snap a photo. You can see all the faux fur falling off. <laughs> okay, so this book is awesome. I'm going to. Flip you down and hopefully I don't lose you or you don't get all like rusty. There you go. This book is amazing. So I, Sarah taped an episode for It's So Easy this season, which is really cool. And in the back of this book, she sent me the book as a gift, which is really cool too. There's two patterns. It's one tunic pattern or two pieces. It's a tunic. So obviously... Thus, the name of the book, oops, the Tunic Bible. She makes all of these tops out of one pattern. You know how much I love pattern hacks. So look at the beautiful pictures here. In case you don't know her. Now, I haven't met Julie yet, but I do know Sarah. This is Sarah. The pictures in here are amazing. She has, and yes, I, I did add this to the influencer page. So if you click on that, you will find this and a few other new books. All of these came from one pattern. Let's check these out. She has a great Instagram account, too, because she's always taking such cute photos. Okay, I love this style. This is very cute. So she takes tunic to a whole new level, I think. Just a lot of fun. Dressy, non-dressy. This one's really cute. Have any of you read this book? If you have, I'd love to know. All right. There's a few more. All right, Karen, I got your note. The video is better when you use your phone. So I will definitely go back to using my phone. Oh, I just got her note. I didn't even notice that. See, that's what happens when I when I review the book. These are both very, very cute. But I can see that when I move that the video stalls. So I should probably not move so much. It's not reversed. Okay, well, that's a bonus. At least that's one thing that's gone right. <laughs> Okay, so she gives some general, you know, things about sewing photos on just about every page of really bright, fun things. Of course, I love the white. Janice, you have that book? Yeah, do you like it? Um, what is her name again? Marcy, her name is Sarah Gunn, S-A-R-A-H-G-U-N-N, -N, and Julie Starr, S-T-A-R-R. You don't have her book, but you love her blog and Instagram. Yeah, I agree. Now, this one is amazing. I love that. I could see painting or hand dyeing this top. Right. I will definitely, yes, and I will post a link to the Amazon page. Let's see. I think I have it right here. Um, no, I don't. I'll post it right after the video. So I'll leave it in the comments. I know. Don't you love the tunics, Rachel? It's so fun. As a mommy with little ones, yes. You know what? I should buy. My, I should make some of these for my sister. This one's really cool. Oh, she went to Nashville for your ASG group. That's cool. All right. So these are pretty. It's kind of fun. Um, 
Then there's some illustrations on how to sew. I'm giving you the whole tour of the book, so you won't, no surprises, right? There's nothing worse than seeing a book and it looks really great on the first few pages and then you get it and you're like, oh, what a waste. This would be one that you would not want on Kindle. You would definitely want to buy this one because there's just so much information in it and it's just very inspiring. It's one of those that even if you're not going to read anything in it, there's enough photos to keep you occupied, which is always a bonus. All right, that's about it. I don't want to show you the entire thing and ruin it, but... So anyways, I give this book an A+. I did see that Kenneth, Kenneth King's book is out on fitting, and I added that to the influencer page as well. So that's on there. And I saw a few more new books coming out. So these are the, I want to give this one a review. I'll give another one review tomorrow. I haven't bought Kenneth's book yet, so I can't review that one. But um, I, it looks pretty good. It's a fitting book, which we all need. I don't think you could ever have too many fitting books <laughs> because once you get one Thing figured out then something else doesn't fit it's just the rules of life right i know all right so uh nancy she says the book is great very clear instructions i agree so <laughs> i'm reading more no hoodie no hoodie yeah very cool okay so bye linda have a good day she says congrats to the winner whoever wins uh, are any of those for knits hey rachel you know what i didn't most of those looked for woven I didn't see too many for knits. I have a YouTube video on sewing knits into a tunic. I think it's on YouTube. If not, it was on It's So Easy. I'll have to find it. That video with the square, this went on YouTube last week. So in case you missed it, it's up. It's there. For those of you that were watched episode 70 on YouTube this morning, I took it down because my mouth didn't match my words. So if you said I have a milk mustache, it was worse because I was like talking about two minutes ahead of my my hands. So I deleted it in case you're wondering what happened to it. A few of you wrote comments and I answered and then I deleted it. So, yeah. Oh, hey, Karen, you already ordered Kenneth's book. Well, nice job. All right. So so that's about it. That's all I have for today. If you have any questions and then I'm going to give away my book to somebody. <laughs> I got to quit. Uh, what I'm definitely going to do with this fabric is run it to the serger and finish the edges that way because I'm a, it's a little fuzzy, but that was my fault. I cut it really quickly and I broke the rules. Remember how I told you how you cut into the back and slide? I actually cut, cut, cut. Yeah, if you missed that, it was on last week. So am I forgetting anything, Gwen? Gwen says hi. All right, he's always on backlog. In case I need anything, I fall over. All right, so let me see who is the big winner for today. The winner for today wins my book. Speaking of books, this. So this is uh, how to start your own home-based fashion design business. There are a ton of good business ideas for you and a couple cute stories. So somebody wrote last week that their favorite story in there was the hot tub story. I can't believe I put the hot tub story in there. I didn't think I did, but I must have. I've told the hot tub story. So, but the woman has passed away now. So now it's okay to read it. She was a lovely lady, but the hot tub story is in there. That's all I can say. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it for you, but it is true. I know. Yeah. I can see when going, I can't believe you included that story. Yes. That's the whole reason we moved. So that's all I can share with you. All right. So while I'm looking up the winner, uh, by the way, I wish you all a very good Easter. I hope you have a good weekend, safe travels if you're traveling. And I wanna hear from you over the weekend, tell me what you're sewing because I have a few projects I'm gonna be working on. Of course, I'll share it on Instagram. I don't always share it on Facebook because it's faster just to post a photo on Instagram, but I'll share it with you next week when I get here. All right, so let me go to my contest page. So by the way, the whole thing with everybody's information being shared everywhere, on these weird contests. Just so you know, my contest is my contest. Nobody gets your information except for me. And the only information I get is your name, your email address, so I can tell you if you won or not, and then if you answer my questions. But those are for me. I don't sell them. I don't give them to anyone. I don't know who would want them anyways, but I'm just telling you that, uh, now, those crazy contests that you would see rolling around, and I used to 
one of my friends would always send those to me and I'd say, quit sending them to me because I'm not going to fill them out. Like, what's your favorite color? What does your color say about your personality? You know, all those crazy ones. Now, if you click on a contest and you get taken out of Facebook someplace else, be warned that that's not a good idea. So just so you know that my contest is, I use um, a server for it, but that's all in my information. So nothing is being given out, just so you know. And I don't take your pictures. I don't want them. <laughs> Although I love seeing them for those of you that share the photos in the group. But just so you know, you're safe on my side. So I just thought I'd share that because I know that's kind of a kind of a creepy thing. And also somebody asked me that they they share photos of their kids a lot online. And if you notice, I don't share a lot of photos of my nieces and nephews purposely because of the fact that everybody has your information. I still share some, but not so many. And that's the reason being. So in case you're wondering, I can share photos of Wynn and I because we're just us. And I share photos of all of you when we're traveling, but, and the fish, fish don't care. Anyway, so when you get carried away on the kids stuff, just be careful where you're sharing it. That's my two cents of advice for the day. Yeah, and you do appreciate that. I agree. Rebecca, I got a really cute picture of us. I just went through all of our photos last week. Okay, um, is it a page that says what Angela uses from Amazon? Oh, did you want my page? Okay, I'll give you that, and then I'm going to, I have two computers going, so I have to figure out which mouse is which. All right, hold on one second. I think I have it on here. So here's the contest. Let me make sure I have that right. All right, we are going to draw one winner. And while that's loading, I'm just gonna check this. Yeah, you know what, I have to say, I think I like the phone better too, it's just easier, but ah, you had to try this. Well, the nice part of this is it will live stream to Facebook and Amazon at the same time. When I do the videos on Facebook, it's a lower quality video. So when it goes to Amazon, it just doesn't look as good. So I don't know. I'll keep playing with stuff. All right. Let's see. Computer's slow today. I must be using up all the bandwidth with this live show. All right. For those of you that wanted to know, both of these came up at the same time. The Amazon page that I'm downloading stuff each week to is amazon.com forward slash shop, S-H-O-P, forward slash Angela underscore Wolf. So that is amazon.com forward slash shop, forward slash Angela underscore Wolf. All right, and back to the Facebook page here and draw your winner. By the way, did any of you, while I'm drawing this, did any of you make any outfits for Easter? I asked this on the questions, and there were quite a few quite a few people had replied to this. Um, some of you are still working on your jeans. Easter mug rugs. Oh, who said that? That sounds so cute. In fact, I have my mug rug right here. This one. Remember when we made these? Yes. What a great idea. Easter mug rugs. That would be a great gift for my mom. Uh, nothing special. Some of you are not really doing much for Easter as far as sewing wise. A lot of cooking though. Okay. Oh, somebody wants to know the link of where I get my labels. Okay. So, oh gosh, it's like the hardest name to remember. It starts with an X. So I'll have to look it up. I should just have that somewhere where I could uh, send you to. I'll look it up. It's in California, so I'm sorry. I don't know it off the top of my head. I should, I should just write it down and just stick it here. Now, remember that you have to order quite a few labels from that company. There are others that you can order less. Okay, and, oh, Wynn wants, oh, somebody's asking, hey, Wynn, somebody's asking you, do you cook a special dish for Easter? No, I don't. He's laughing. <laughs> He's like, I cook every night of the year. Why would I want to cook on Easter when our moms will do that? <laughs> so what you're thinking? <laughs> so no, he does not. <laughs> All right, let's see. I see a few more in here. Um. Oh, thanks. A lot of you are saying you love the show and you love to watch. Well, thank you. And I'm sorry if the video is crazy this week. Um, 
Have you made anything out of charmeuse? Yes, I have. And I love charmeuse. In fact, I have three bolts of it here that I was I haven't got to yet because I was waiting kind of till summer. I absolutely love silk charmeuse. That's kind of like Susan's with the fabric that gets kind of slippery. But once you get the hang of it, it is so easy to sew. I quite often will use um, a French seam on those because they're so dainty. But you just have to be careful that your seam allowance is really narrow. Otherwise, it gets really wavy, which is not so good. So keep that in mind. Um, the other thing with silk charmeuse is I wash and dry mine, which changes the hand of it a little bit. It almost turns it into more of a suede silk, but I like it. And that way, if I wash and dry it beforehand, then after I sew the garment, I can wash and dry it later, which is great. Great question, by the way. Um, where do you get the tearaway vinyl used in your nail bag? Okay. Oh, I think that somebody asked that last week too. Uh, that at Joanne Fabrics. It's just basic tearaway. It's not tearaway though. It's it's just clear vinyl. It's not tearaway. You have to cut into it. So it's in the section back. If you go to Joanne Fabrics in the far back, they have all the upholstery. And then they have the stuff for like tablecloths and you know everything for a picnic. That's where it is. Yeah. All right, and I just, let's see, a couple more here. Oh, you're in the middle of Easter outfit for your daughter. Oh, that's cool, Rachel. I have made nobody outfits for Easter this year, but I like the mug rug idea. I can handle that. All right, and let's see, Susan, you're working on some pants. Oh, this is, this is not Susan Fisher. This is a different Susan. You're working on pants, and you're new to sewing, and you missed you messed up on the pockets. You have to start over. Oh no. Oh, and they're a knit fabric. Okay. I'm feeling for you right now. That is not fun. So if you screw up on the pockets, well, I can tell you one worse. I had pockets one time. I was not using too sharp of scissors and you know, just so picture a pair of pants from inside out. And then you have like, here's your side seam and there's my pocket. And there's my side seam. So I sewed all the way around it. And I went to snip into that side of the pocket that you're supposed to snip before you turn it right side out. I was using dull scissors. I snipped and I ended up cutting right into my pants. And those were not knit. And if I took them in anymore, they'd be too tight. So those went into the trash. So if that makes you feel any better, that was really not, that was not a good moment. That was not a very good moment for sewing at all. That's one of those that make you think, why do I do this? <laughs> yeah. So I feel for you on that and ripping out stitches out of, uh, I hate to ask what your stitch length is. Hopefully it's like 3.0 or bigger. Just a tip on ripping those out. Start with the back side, the bobbin side. It's faster. All right, Lynn, you're making two men's vests. Oh, that's cool. Steampunk theme. Oh, for a steampunk theme wedding. That sounds fun. Are you embroidering it or are you just um, just making it a steampunk design? I've seen a lot of really cool stuff. All right, Sarah, you said you made your labels with grain ribbon and your sewing machine alphabet. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. In fact, I saw that, I think, on Pinterest one day, and that was very cute. That's a great idea. So those of you that just need one or two labels or just a handful, what she's saying is using ribbon and using the letters on your sewing machine and just embroider. That's a great idea. I actually, I lost one of my jackets with my label in it. It says Angela Wolf, the big old label. And I thought, well, maybe somebody will think that maybe it's my jacket and they'll send it back to me. But then I realized that's my label. that's in a lot of garments that I've made for people. So maybe not so much, but I would love to get that rain jacket back. I think I left it on the plane. I know one of those things. Somebody's win, my loss. All right. All right. So I'll go back and answer all your questions later because I see a whole bunch more rolling through, but we are getting to the end of our hour and I want to draw a winner for the book and wish you all a happy Easter. So the results, participants. There was a lot of you that entered this. I always think that all of you already have my book, but I guess you don't. Draw one winner and you get an extra entry if you shared this or if you shared it on your page. And the winner is from Ohio. And she's not sewing anything for Easter this year, she says. <laughs> oh, we have her phone number. Oh. Do you want to call her, Win? <laughs> I 
think it's right there. I can dial it if you have me the phone. She left her phone number and said that it was okay if we called her during the show. So let's just call her. And then whoever hears it is going to know that they won. So I'm not going to say her phone number out loud, though. Okay. Can you hear that okay? I think it's ringing. <laughs> Nobody ever leaves their phone number that wins, so this is kind of fun. Please leave your message for four, four, zero, oh, three. I don't want her to. <laughs> well, that didn't work out so well. So the winner was is Kathy Lynn from Ohio, and you just heard her area code. <laughs> So she wasn't home, even though her number was on there, but that's okay. We tried. So anyways, congratulations, Kathy. You win the book. I'm uh, wishing you all a wonderful week. Next week, I will go back to the phone so the video doesn't get crazy. It just, it worked out kind of good because I could actually read your questions faster, but I don't know. Got to try something new every once in a while. So have a wonderful week. If you have any questions, holler. I will put a link to the Amazon page. I will put a link to this video. If you didn't see this on YouTube, how to make this jacket how to make that top right there. And I have a whole bunch of blog posts for you. So, all right, have a great week. Happy Easter. I will talk to you soon and keep in touch. All right, see ya. <laughs> Although what's really funny is on here, I don't even know how to turn it off. So I might be here all day. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I know, maybe, I don't know.